Dark Souls can be so cinematic. Too bad this stupid HUD gets in the way. Let's get rid of it. Just to add to the challenge, I'm not going to level Endurance, only to make our stamina management harder. To this end, we start Warrior for our highest potential Endurance. We take some extra souls with us, and spawn in Lothric. First thoughts, it's not that bad. We one-shot the enemies here, and we lead the Crystal Lizard off for some free souls. As we get ready for Gundir, we realize something. The boss health bar doesn't... show up? We could have realized this earlier, but now is when it's most apparent. As such, it's kind of hard to judge how much damage you're doing, and this is especially apparent when Phase 2 comes out of nowhere. It's okay though, because this fight is not hard. Most of you watching aren't subscribed. Consider supporting my growth by sharing the video or subscribing. Both are a great way to help me make this more than a hobby. I also have a Discord. Consider joining to interact with me in the community. Sorry about that. Back to the video. The very next thing we do is course the Swordmaster to jump for some free souls. Then we level up with our 12,000 souls? Where did I get those? <clears throat> we run through Highwall, slaughtering every enemy that comes into view, including this Lothric Knight, who makes an awfully cinematic fight. Just kidding, this swing animation is goofy. We methodically take out all the Highwall enemies, just in case, because at this point, I'd lost track of my health. We also grab the Selkie and Estus Shard, and take out Emma. We go ahead and free Grey Rat now, instead of later, and it turns out someone isn't happy about that. Too bad the second tutorial boss has trouble hitting us at all. Phase 2 comes around, and honestly, it's easier in some ways, leading to a first try win. We raise our banner, and this is where our run really begins. We kidnap Yol and grab Loretta's bone, which we'll give to Grey Rat. For now though, we have a brawl to participate in. We slaughter everyone here, and grab the Estus Shard here. We then pick up the Warriors of Sunlight. Too bad we can't see it though. We take a little break up ahead, and we come back to... Whoa! We make it to our next bonfire, and now is when we head back to Firelink, where we do four things. Number one is killing Leonhard, who has our mask which we'll be taking. Number two is reinforcing our flask. Number three is progressing Grey Rat's quest. And number four is getting five levels from Yol, which we die to receive. The next best move is to grab the Undead Bone Shard from the settlement. And then we open the shortcut and we take on the good old CRG. I can't really tell how much damage I'm doing, but I can tell I'm doing a lot of it since phase two comes within like five seconds of starting the fight. We even pop a bubble before phase two starts. One heavy attack seems to pop quite a few of the bubbles, so we can just rely on it. And soon enough, the fight ends. I don't think it was a close fight. Although, I guess I can't really tell. Back at Firelink, we grab the heavy gem from Hawkwood, which he starts giving out after you kill the Grey Wood. Holy shit, man, can you just give it to me? Thank you. Grey Rat's back from his first pillage, and we grab our ideal weapon, the Zweihander. Zweihander? Zweihander? Whatever. Well, nowhere to go but forward. Okay, anyway, I just wanted to show off my favorite weapon. Now, it's time to help Sigurd with our two-handers, although he's one-handing his. This demon is no match for the both of us. And after he falls asleep, we head upwards and get our armor set, along with the Clorinthy ring. Now is where this run really begins.
Or wait, is that how I said it the first time? Can I not even make a joke correctly? All right, into the road of sacrifices we go. Look at this guy. He thought he could escape. We go around collecting everything we can here, even though we don't need to at all. Who are those two weirdos? Eh, they probably don't matter. There's another flask shard here, which will give us a total of... Uh... A good amount of flasks. In the road of sacrifices, we grab the grass crest shield and the Farron coal, so we can make our weapon heavy. Oh, and we get poisoned, which seals our fate, but we're not sure exactly. Oh, there we go. At least that makes us an excuse to be back at Firelink to infuse our weapon, which we do. All right, Crystal Sage, you got anything new going on since last time? Phase 1 is extremely easy, and Phase 2 isn't that bad. Just run around and sprint attack the clones, before farming the real one. And do it again for an easy win. There's a second undead bone shard outside the cathedral, which is an area we mostly run around in before heading inside, which is where our run really begins. We unlock the shortcut back to our bonfire, and decide to take out the first giant, for his large titanite. It takes a while, but we do get him, and we grab our favorite ring, Lloyd's sword ring. We drop down to where the giant drops his titanite, grab it, and Kirk is here? Since when were we embered? It's alright. Kirk isn't that much of an issue. While we're here, we go ahead and kill the other giant here too, which takes less time than the first. You want to know why I chose my weapon so precisely? It's the Deacons. Well, kind of the Deacons. This weapon has great crowd control and great damage, but is also just fun to use, making it my preferred weapon in general. The Deacons aren't too bad. Even when Phase 2 comes along, we just slam the main one for an easy win. We have a quick journey through the Road of Sacrifices again, and make it to Farron Keep. This area is pretty fair, in the fact that the easy enemies balance out the Poison Swamp. Farron Keep is also when we realize we can tell what our health is sometimes. We have both Lloyd's and Blue Tearstone, which gives us a colored effect on our character whenever we're at high or low health. Poison gives us an effect too. We make it to the perimeter bonfire and move towards the Abyss Watchers. We get into the fight, and our damage is... Oh yeah. I'm pretty experienced with not only this fight, but this weapon. So, landing fully charged heavy attacks isn't an issue. When the second one comes in, we run away. But it doesn't last that long. And the third one shows up pretty quick. One more heavy attack, and oh, I guess it's time for phase two now. We get over aggressive at the beginning here, and it costs us like 20 seconds and some Estus because this Abyss Watcher is refusing to let up on us. It's alright though, because while he may be flashy, I'm... Why did I write this? It's alright though, because while he may be flashy, I'm the true... You know what? No, I'm not recording that. Go fuck yourself for writing me. <clears throat> mm. We kill the Abyss Watchers and run through the catacombs. And even without the shortcut, this area is easy. Oh hey, what's this? Oh shit, what the fuck? What a nice area I'm in. Oh, never mind. High Lord, High Lord Wolnir is a joke. So, bye Lord Wolnir. We have an easy optional area to complete, and we do so largely for the Titan. Well, that and the boss, who is so easy. He doesn't even explode before he dies. 
And with that, we're in Irithel, which is where our run really begins. And other than enemies that were made to run past, this area really isn't too bad. Well, other than this horrible stairway that I hate, we almost made it, too. It takes us more tries than on most bosses in this run, but we do it eventually. We open the shortcut and fight Pontiff. And for Pontiff, we equip a parry shield, which makes this fight a joke that's almost as funny as I am. Okay, dude, stop lying to yourself. Anyway, the boss is dead. To escape from these NPCs, we open a secret path, and let them follow. We also take out both Sullivan's beasts here, for the Ring of Favor, which we actually don't end up using. We head forward, and eventually make it to Anorlando, and there is where we meet Ornstein and Smo. Wait, wait, what did you do to Ornstein? Unforgivable. At least that guy is dead. Well, now it's time to take the other branching path. To the dungeon we go, without Ava. We take out some bad guys, and run past everyone else, for a short but quick route to Yorm. Since we have no weapon restrictions, we use the Storm Ruler, and take out Yorm quickly. Well, there's only one route forward, and it starts with Dancer. I don't know about you, but Dancer is one of my favorite bosses in this game. The one issue here though, is our stamina. We're unable to level it up, and we can only swing a couple times before running out of stamina. Our positioning is important, because otherwise, we're gonna take damage, and I don't know exactly how much damage I'll be dealt either, making knowing when to heal harder. Phase 2 comes soon though, and we step back. A little patience is all Dancer really comes down to sometimes, and she goes down. We put down the Lord Vessel, oh wait no that's the first game, the ladder falls down, and we make our way towards the Consumed King. We head back up the elevator for an Estus Shard, and we come up on Osiris soon enough. This boss is kind of a vigor check if you think about it, because while phase 1 is easy, you can stand at the right spots, or just dodge the telegraphed attacks. Phase 2 is shaped around Osiris's charge move. He'll often run away with it, or just hit you with it no startup. So, if you have the vigor to tank it, the boss becomes easy. If not, well, let's not worry about if not. Going into the super secret hidden area, we have a boss refight on our hands. Gundir Mark II is just as easily parryable as his first iteration. And because we have a better weapon than we did, this boss is a joke. We grab both items here, which are both useful. We're back in Irithel Dungeon, because this time, we're going to Arch Dragon Peak. Our first boss here well, he isn't a boss, or someone you should care about at all, really. And by now, we know the optimal route through this area. Up the stairs, across the bridge, around these losers, and to the bonfire. And that's when we trigger our next boss. Well, let's see how this goes. And with the Nameless King down, we can finally move into Lothric. We're very quick to dodge everyone here, 
and I mean everyone, for a rather boring area. Well, after two sentences, we're to our next boss. And what a similar boss it is. But unfortunately for the Dragon Slayer armor, he's not as hard. And he definitely won't get a cool montage. He will get a monologue though. And even though he's not as hard as Nameless, he's got some tricks up his sleeve. Well, that's what I would say. Well, that's what I would. And after that, the Dragon Slayer armor goes down. Since we have three Lords of Cinder under our belt, we can access the Grand Archives, where we again run through the entire area. It's the norm at this point, so it's your fault for expecting something different. Well, we might as well make this boss dramatic too, right? Oh dear. Another dogged contender. Welcome, unkindled one, purloiner of cinders. Mind you, the mantle of Lord interests me none. The fire-linking curse, the legacy of Lords, let it all fade into nothing. You've done quite enough. Now have your rest. The Royal Sword of Lothric shall grant you peace. This fight is where the run really begins. Because the game is trying to give you the final test of the main game. How long can you last against a fast-paced, two-phased boss? The answer is unclear this time. Simply because we don't know the help. Ours or his. I guess we find out eventually though. Phase 2 is exactly the same, but with someone else on our enemy's back. And it doesn't really make a difference, other than the time investment, making this boss easy. Alright, into the DLC. Let's quicken it up. After the ground comes out under us, we destroy a different set of ground to drop down to our next boss. When the boss comes up, we take out the adds, and then get some reposts without parrying. The first boss doesn't last long, and we spend a while waiting out the second. And now, the long run to the DLC's other boss. Thankfully, I've shortened it into a viewable state for you.
Wait, I was supposed to commentate that boss. Fuck. Watching it was so cool, I forgot. I can boil this DLC down to one word. We Going into the Twin Demons, I've devised a strategy. If we can stagger one demon and take out most of his health before the second one spawns, we're going to be set for the rest of the fight. And while I can't know the exact numbers, one stagger is going to do a pretty good amount of damage. Plus the riposte, that's almost a kill. And once one of them deactivates, we swoop in for the kill on the second one and quickly get it since our weapon is great. And with that, phase two is up. Let's see if we're skilled enough for this. With no hunt, we run away from the jumping slam, dodge into the wind box on the runaway, and stay behind the demon for the laser attack. We stay behind on the charge, and run at the boss during the fireball. We get another stagger, and that's that. This part of the DLC is largely uneventful, and it leads to the Bridge Medir, which isn't going to be a challenge for someone such as ourselves, even if we are blinded by the lack of a HUD. We send him down and follow him. Even on startup, we're able to get we're able to get three hits off on this boss. So the fight can't be too bad. Right? Right? Yeah, right. This fight is just about staying in front of Madeir and not getting greedy. If you stay behind him, you get slaughtered and miss out on some damage. But, especially after a stagger, this fight is easy. Well, let's see it. Is half light hard? Uh, no. Wakey wakey. Ah! Hey, yo, man, how you been? Holy shit! Gale goes for a sneak attack to start, but we're ready. And proceed to dodge every attack he throws at us, even in his unnatural crawling state. Okay, almost every attack. Okay, some attacks. Okay, we killed him first try. What more do you want from me? One more, one more. Then I'll be free from this HUD blindness. A charge attack gets a charge attack in turn. We get a stagger, and that marks the start of phase two. He kicks us. Twice? We're not even blocking. Well, if Dark Souls 3 had to have an unremarkable final boss, this would be the way to go about it, because this fight is easy. And I'm tired of being blind. I'll make the whole world blind too.